Hey guys, welcome to another Vendor Spotlight. My name is Todd White with Spin Around Sound. And as you guys know, or may not know, I have started these Vendor Spotlights to where I am trying to make it easy for you as a client to go to one spot and find any vendor that you guys are looking for. Um, and tonight, we are pleased to have Savannah on here with us. Um, and I'm going to let Savannah, we're going to start this off and just have Savannah tell you a little bit about herself um, so we can kind of get to know her. And then we're going to break into her business. Um, I'll let her share all the goodies about that. And then I'm going to have some questions for her just to try to make this easy for you, the client, to just watch this and say, oh, she answered a bunch of my questions. I want to reach out to her to take make sure she gets the photos of my wedding or my event or whatever it is that you're having. So first, Savannah, thank you so much for joining us. So glad Thanks to for have having you me here. <laughs> um, I have worked with Savannah in a couple, actually a few occasions um, with her doing the, the photography. Um, and I can't wait to see some of the pictures that she's got of our last event that's going to be coming out. So excited for those, but thanks so much for joining us. Um, I'm really glad you're on here. So I guess first off, just tell us a little bit about who is Savannah. Sure. Yeah. So, um, I'm Savannah. I am 26. I was born and raised here in Louisville, Kentucky. Um, and I'm the owner of Resilient Hearts Photography and I'll say it again slower cause it's like, it gets mashed together. Yeah. It's Resilient Hearts Photography. Um, I've been doing photography for almost four years now. Okay. Um, and I primarily do weddings. It's what I love. It's what makes my heart sink. So, okay. Yeah. okay. So let me ask you, um, did you do this when you were younger? Photography? No. Toy around? So, so how did you get started in this? So my sister, shout out to Shaylin, she played football in high school. And so, we, you know, we were playing around with like cuddle and that kind of stuff, you know, and she wanted pictures to post on Instagram and all of that. And my mom had like some rinky dink, like Nikon. And I was like, you know what, I'll just, you know, take some pictures from the sidelines, whatever. So I got this really cool picture of her that like, when I think about my like journey in photography, like that picture is always what I think about. Like, that's where I really started. Sure. Um, and it's literally like the most beginner like photo, but I still just love it. Like it's just a picture of her from the side with her helmet and it's got even a big number seven on the side and ended up being like one of her favorite photos ever. So that's kind of what got me started okay. and I kind of fell off. And then when COVID hit, I was so bored. Like I was working in healthcare, you know, like kind of having to quarantine away from everyone because I was working in the hospital. Mm -hmm. And so I kind of pulled that camera back out and my cousin, Olivia, shout out to Olivia. She was one of the only people who was not afraid to be around me at the time. So we went to the park one day and her and her roommate, Caitlin, just kind of like, we all just took pictures of each other. I was going through a really hard time, you know, working in healthcare. It was kind of like a dark time in my life. Oh yeah. Um, and so I just kind of wanted a little pick me up. So we took pictures of each other at Broad Run Park. And I was like, I kind of like this. This is fun. So that's kind of what really jump started it. Okay. Okay. So when did you do your first wedding? Do you remember? I did my first wedding. Okay. So my first wedding I did as a second shooter was April 20th of 2021. My first wedding ever as a lead photographer was June 26th of 2021. Okay. Okay. So, so June of 2021 is kind of when you did on your own thing. So yeah. the second photographer, did you do it for um, someone that was needing it or did you just kind of fall into it? How did that happen? So actually that was that photographer's first wedding as well. Oh, so cool. she just reached, she got my, my name from one of her friends, reached out to me, asked me to second shoot. And I was like, I'm going to be completely honest. I have no interest in weddings, but you know, like I'm looking to get into it, whatever. Like when I first started, I did not want to do weddings. They scared the crap out of me. I wanted no part of it. Right. But then- after shooting with Christina that first time, I was like, this is what I was made for. Like, I was hooked after that. I just, I loved it so much. So you you said, um, you said that you was her, a second shooter. Mm -hmm. um, what what does that mean for someone? So that when you're the second shooter, you are pretty much the assistant for the main photographer of the day. So like with my, everybody kind of does the difference. So with my second shooters, they're kind of like the main photographer for the groom. So my second shooters kind of just hang out with the groom and the groomsmen for the day. They get like any little details. That I don't, you know, I'm too busy going around getting other stuff to get. Mm -hmm. um, they're like a second eye. And what I love about second shooters is they have their own like sense of like style and way of shooting that they bring to the wedding day too. 
Sure. Um, there have been galleries that I've delivered where like my second shooter's photos, like just really took it from like great to amazing. So sure. <laughs> they're really important. Well, and you said something a while ago where you said that um, you didn't want anything to do with weddings. <laughs> and you were scared to do that. Yeah. And, you know, I've heard that a lot from photographers that, you know, they don't want to do weddings and then they end up getting into that, to that side of the business. Um, but they're scared. So, so I assume um, that scary would be that you just don't capture the right photo or um, maybe you don't get what the bride and groom wants, you know, speaking of weddings or even that maybe something fails and you lose all the photos. I mean, is that accurate? All of those are completely <laughs> accurate. Those were all things that like I thought of whenever I thought of weddings. It was just like this big, ugly monster that I was like, nope, I'm scared of that. No, thanks. I'll stick to my comfort zone. Yeah. And that's all what it boiled down to was that I just wasn't comfortable doing it. So sure, sure. So now you're very comfortable doing it. Oh yes, uh, I love it. <laughs> I, I saw I saw some you know a lot of your photos and and they are great. So before I steal your thunder, I I, I do want to mention that you were just published in some big magazine. I think is that right? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I was just published. In, well, it's just it was kind of crazy when I think about it. Um, I was published in Vogue and Vanity Fair, two two different weddings. So. When I think back to like my beginning in photography, like I had no confidence in myself, like in my anything really, truly. And God has used this business to just like grow me so much as a person. And like, truly, I believe, like put me where he has like wanted me to be. Sure. Um, I'm never more confident than when I have a camera in my hand. Seriously, it's it's crazy. So and you know, this being in the wedding industry, so much of your success in this industry and like getting where you want to be, like fulfilling your goals and your dreams is just putting yourself out there. Yeah. So um, I remember specifically the wedding that was published in Vogue. I left that wedding and I texted two of my best friends, Keely and Katie. They're also photographers here in Kentucky. Okay. And I texted them and I was like, this one was like, is going to take me to the next level. And, you know, like you think that and I, I'm like, I know it sounds crazy, but it's like feeling in my heart. Like this one was like, this one was different. And so I um, got it finished, got it edited. I sat on it for a few weeks. Um, I submitted it to like a local magazine and they didn't accept it. Well, they wanted to put it on a blog and I was like, I'm not accepting that. Like I, this deserves something more. Yeah. Um, just the way that the vendors worked together, Tyler Jackson out of Lexington. Um, my second shooter was Jacqueline Goff Well, Jacqueline Harper. She's out of Louisville as well. Um, and then Cassandra Kelly was the wedding planner. Just the way that like all of us worked together was truly like magic. Like, you know, when you get the right vendor team, it is just pure magic on that day. Yeah. yeah. Um, I think someone and I like, commented that on a post. Jessica <laughs> Gleason. Yes. Shout out Jessica. Yeah. She, she yeah. commented that about us. So um, it was just one of those days where I left and I was like, I truly was given the creative freedom to just really like live in the moment, capture what was going on. And I think that is what made it so different for me that day because that was the first time I feel like my bride has ever been like it's yours I don't I don't want anything posed I want you to capture what's going on what you think needs to happen it's yours okay. and that really truly changed the game so sure so how did so what happened so you found a couple of photos that you really loved and you sent them in to the to Vanity Fair and Vogue is that right so I ended up finding Vogue's email <laughs> after like weeks of digging I found it from one of my friends who was published in Vogue and so I sent them an email and literally the subject line was it's worth a shot so I just messaged them and I said like I'm really proud of this gallery I'm not even from like British like Britain I'm from Louisville Kentucky you know so I'm just this little girl from Louisville Kentucky uh -huh. and um, I'd love for you guys to look at this gallery and if you want to publish it like I would love that so I didn't hear anything and then Thanksgiving day I'm like in my bathroom curling my hair and I get like this notification on my phone and it was a gmail notification so I clicked on it and it was from floor pick from vogue magazine and I literally didn't even read the whole thing like I started screaming my mom thought somebody was like brutally <laughs> murdered she was like what is going on like she was panicked <laughs> I ran up the stairs and I was like shaking and I was like, I think Vogue emailed me back. And so she's the one that actually read it and was like, yeah, they want to publish your wedding. And I was just like in shock. Like I, I truly did not believe it for the longest time. That's awesome. That's so, awesome. yeah, super fun. So, um, so of course you probably don't get anything for that just besides the publicity of you being in that right. magazine. Right. So that's, that's yeah. awesome. That's yeah. great. So congratulations on that. That's a huge <laughs> accomplishment. 
Um, I mean, I know some photographers that's been doing this stuff for years and, you know, hasn't, hasn't ever reached that, you know, pinnacle of success, I guess. So, um, so that, that's huge. So <clears throat> let's talk about weddings. You said those are your kind of your, your favorite thing and that's kind of what you do. Um, so when you, when you book a wedding, do you book as far as a package or do they book you by the hour? How, how does that work? If someone called you and wanted to book, you said, Hey, I'm having a wedding this date. Of course, are you available? And then how do you find out about pricing and how do you, how do you price those out those, out those weddings? For sure. So I start with packages of four, six and eight hours. That's what I okay. advertise for. Okay. Um, I do in between. So like I'll do five, seven, nine, 10 hours. You know, those are just the main three that people book me for the most. Um, and then I have a typical time frame, four hour wedding or yeah. seven. Okay. All right. Yeah. yeah. So four hours is more like elopement or like backyard kind of smaller wedding. And I'm right. booking a lot of six hour packages right now. That seems to be kind of the six to seven is kind of the sweet spot. So, okay. Okay. Yeah. So do you uh, price them by the hour or is it per, like, do they have to fill out like, Hey, I want this photo and this photo. How does, how does all that work? It's by the hour. So like my packages okay. will go by the hour. And then like, if they want in between, I do that. Okay. Um, we sit down, we, I was probably talked to my brides four or five times before their wedding just, and I'm constantly like texting them back and forth. Like I'll meet with them, the initial console, and we'll just kind of talk about like what they're wanting. Like my theme is garden party. Okay. So in my head, if I see something on Instagram that I think one of them, like, I'm going to screenshot it and send it to them. Keep this in the back of your head. Like, let's do something like this. What are your thoughts? Um, my bride that was published in Vanity Fair, Morgan, she really wanted like disco garden party. Like that was her kind of vibe. And she got married at the, um, garden court at the seminary. Okay. Yep. Um, yep. And so for hers, you know, like we were looking on Pinterest constantly, like, let's do these, let's incorporate these little disco balls. Let's do, you know, something else. So um, it's constant communication. I tell my brides, like, I have business hours except for you. Like, I, I will answer if I'm awake at any time. Sure. So. sure. Okay. So um, how far out are you booking? I book about a year, year and a half. Okay. Yeah. Um, and is it um, is it something that they just go to a, a website, Facebook page, what all do you have as far, as far as resources for them to go to? Sure. So I have email, I've got Pinterest, I've got Facebook, Instagram, TikTok. Okay. I've had one Brad find me on TikTok, which if they're telling you that TikTok is not working for this industry, they are wrong. It is. Sure. It's yep. working great. So um, there are a lot of ways. I've even had people find my phone number. I'm like, how did you get this number? Like, um, but yeah, there are a lot of ways to reach out to me. The best way though, is probably to find me through Instagram. So, okay. So Instagram, um, <laughs> how do they find you on Instagram? Um, you can search me at resilient hearts photography. Okay. Resilient hearts photography. And I'll throw that up on the screen. So you guys can, can, you don't have to remember that or anything through this. So, um, so what is the most, I guess, random event that you've had to do? <laughs> Right, the most random shot that someone has asked for. <laughs> I was hoping you would ask this. So <laughs> the most random thing I've ever been asked to cover is a funeral. And I'm like, um, I don't, um, I don't do that. <laughs> I do weddings. Is. I'm like, I'm not sure that's even allowed. I don't know. It was a little bizarre. If that person's watching this, like, no hate. I was just right. a little taken back. <laughs> <by it. laughs> yeah. I'm getting uh, hate mail. Well, I mean... Uh, I they say that um uh what do they call that? Something of life. Um celebration of life. Celebration of life. I mean, yeah. they've had DJs at those before, but that would just like I've never done one, but that would just be yeah. I don't know, it'd just be weird to me. But I, I mean, you know, again, if if that's what you want, we'll do it, I'm sure. But it's just, you know, it's different. So um, so have you do you just do photography here in Louisville, Southern Indiana area, or do you travel? What's what's the deal with that? No, I travel. Actually, I have been a little bit everywhere. Um, I just got back from Panama City. I did a little bit there. Yep. Um, I'm going to Italy in September, which is really exciting um, for a wedding. A wedding? Yes. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. Okay. In Florence. Yeah. Okay. And then last year I went to Houston. I do a lot in Texas. I have a lot of friends in Texas, so I, I'm, I'm there a little bit. Um, let's see. Milwaukee, I've been there. I've been to Chicago. Just okay. a little bit all over. So. Okay. It's a lot easier for you to travel than it is someone like me. For sure. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> okay. 
So, so when they book you and you come to an event, is it just you or do you have a second shooter as well? And, or, or how does that work? I always have a second shooter and that's what I tell my brides. It's included in their package. Okay. Um, even if they just book me for the four hour package, like I just recently did my first ever wedding without a second shooter when I was in Panama city. And that was because it was literally only two hours. Sure. So I really didn't need one. Um, but there have been so many times where my second shooter, I'm over here grabbing an important shot and she's like right beside me, but she gets something completely different going on over in left field, you know, but both moments were so important and nothing was missed. And I truly cannot like explain how important it is to me, at least for my business. My second shooters are like irreplaceable. So, okay. So they get two shooters. Um, mm -hmm. And then how do they get the photos? Is that something that's online that they view? I know you talked about a gallery, so I would assume that you upload all the photos online. Yep. I don't limit photos. I'd say for eight, a six to eight hour wedding, I'd deliver anywhere between 900 to 1200 photos somewhere in there. Wow. So, and they're all online. You can, it's like a little link. Um, I can set a password to it if they need me to. Um, I know there's like special circumstances sometimes, sure. but um, whoever has that link can download the photos. I don't charge them to download them. Just, I'm just like, whatever I have, like take them and they're right. yours. Enjoy them, share them, please. So, so they can print at that point, right? Yeah. Yeah. You have to have a print release from you or how does that, how does that work out? My contract says like you can print anywhere. I always just recommend they don't print at Walgreens. Like that's just a conversation I have with all of my brides, just any photo that I've taken that I've edited myself and printed there. It just doesn't look the same as it does on your phone or if you print sure. it through sure. somewhere else. So. Right. Right. Well, and, and also, I mean, you talk about, and, and something I don't think people understand even when they call me, um, to do their weddings as well is there's a lot of after after the event that you have to do especially you you know yeah. I go to a wedding I have some pre-work to do we do the wedding um you know the music everything's good and then once we're done we're done but yeah. on your on, in your in your situation once you're done you're really just starting I just mean starting yeah <laughs> So how long does it take to, I mean, cause you have to go through each photo and edit it. I'm sure mm -hmm. maybe some are just perfect and you don't have to do any editing, but you have to at least look through 900 photos or how many ever you have, uh, you have shot right. and, and maybe edit some, you know, some of those, right? Yeah. So mm -hmm. how, what kind of hours do you think you put in after a wedding? I did. I calculated it once because I was so curious how sure. many I'm putting in. So you think eight hour wedding. But before that, you've had at least two or three 30 to 45 to an hour long phone calls. Mm -hmm. So then we're at, you know, however many hours that is. And then I'd say editing, <laughs> backing up, that takes about three hours after I do an eight hour wedding. So you're you're at like a 13 hour day there. And then editing the sneak peeks. And then we're going to go to the actual editing process. It probably is about, I'm so like picky about every little detail. I'd say... For an eight-hour wedding, I spend a total of nine to ten hours editing, in general, maybe more. <laughs> so you're looking at, you know, if somebody hires you, and you know you send them pricing, and they're like, oh gosh, you know, that's either great or you know you're gonna have some clients that's like, well, you know, why is she this expensive? Or, yeah. But there's a lot of work that goes into that I don't think people right. realize, right? Um, you know, and especially in your situation, so you may do an eight-hour wedding. And then you add all of your phone calls and things on top of it. So you're, you know, let's just say 10 to 12 hours. And then you spend another 10 to 12. I mean, you're looking at almost 24 hours that you're spending right. editing their photos. Yep. Yeah. So that's good to know. So, so when you're booking your photographer, guys, don't forget that there is a lot, like we just said, a lot of, you know, pre-work that goes into it and a lot of back-end work once it's done. So yeah, you're only paying what you may think is for a six hour wedding that you're having, um, or, you know, an eight hour wedding or whatever it may be, but there is a ton of hours that go into this after the fact. So, you know, just because, you know, you think, oh, we're, we're only paying her for six hours. There's plenty more hours that you're really getting out of them. Yeah. Um, and I think that sometimes people don't realize that, you know, that, oh, you know, they just, they don't think that they don't think it all the way through. You know what I mean? Right. Right. There is so much that goes into it, you know, and I don't have a big boss like over me telling me to do trainings and all this. Like I am the boss, sure. which is scary sometimes, you know, right, right. Um, but like, I'm also like using what I make to invest in like 
courses and like constantly learning, constantly like reaching out to people who are far better than I am, have been doing it a lot longer than me, um, doing like consult calls with people that are more advanced in the industry. Sure. Um, so there's a lot that goes into it. I'm not just like constantly staying stagnant. Like I'm trying to constantly improve my business and okay. myself. Yeah, absolutely. I think we all are. So yeah. <laughs> what, what is your brand? What do you like camera wise? I like Canon. I'm a Canon girl. So I started with Nikon and then I switched the day before my first wedding, which looking back, I'm like, that was reckless. <laughs> Why <laughs> did you do that? Sure. <laughs> you allowed that to happen. And that's like you, cause you're the boss. Like once again, <laughs> um, but I'm a Canon girl now and I okay. love it. I love the colors. It's easy to, it's, I think it's easier because so many people shoot Canon where it's like, if I have an issue, I can literally call up 10 of my photographer friends and they all no, probably one of them knows how to fix it. So sure. that's good. You know, that that's one thing that we struggled with for years was that the fact that, um, you know, on the DJ side of this thing, everybody was, you know, you didn't have any, like in my situation, you didn't have any DJ friends because yeah. they're all too concerned that, oh, there's not enough business to go around or they wanted to be the only one in the city. And, and that's, yeah. you know, that's awesome that you say that, that you have, you know, 10 plus photographers that you could call on because, you know, as well as I know, there are plenty of weddings out there. Yeah. And and I mean, Absolutely. there is so much business out there for every vendor that it's just, it's like, why? So over the past few years, I've made a lot of good friends with DJs. Um, we kind of got, had some issues when I first started this thing years ago uh, with one particular, and that just kind of put a sour taste in my mouth, I guess. So I was just kind of like, yeah. look, we're just going to do our own thing and not worry about anybody mm -hmm. else. But over the past few years, we've developed good relationships with some DJs and um, became really good friends now. So that's always good to have somebody you can lean on. Absolutely. Um, you know, and they're they're there to help you, you know, just get better. So, yeah. yes. um, so how many weddings do you like to do a year? My sweet spot, my first year I did like almost 30 and I wanted to like just fall over and die. <laughs> I was tired that year. Right. Um, so my sweet spot is about 15 to 20 a year. So between okay. my own and then second shooting, I do about 15 to 20. So. Okay. So do you, um, is, do you do this full time? No, actually I work at, for Bullitt County public schools, oh, okay. um, in one of their school elementary schools in the front office. So, okay. Okay. So you don't do it full time. So that's good. Do you, do you ever want to get to where it's just full time? If you would have asked me before I started working at the school, I would have said yes. Sure. Now, looking back, it's like, it's a blessing that I don't do it full time because it is every time I get to pick up my camera, it's still enjoyable. I don't burn myself out to the point where it's like, I have no creative like juices flowing at all up here. Like I doing 15 to 20 weddings a year, like ensures that I can stay creative and like stay like not tired. Does that make sure, sense? Like sure. I wore Burn myself out. Out. Yeah. Yeah. out. Yes. I mean like that first year I would look at those galleries and be like, all of these look the same. Like I truly didn't feel like I was giving to my clients and to myself, like what my business and my clients deserve. So yeah. um, when I don't do it full time, I'm a much better business owner and photographer because I can keep myself creative and relaxed and not as tired. Sure. Sure. I get that. Um, there's plenty of times throughout the year that, you know, me and my team are burnt, you know, it's just October <laughs> you know, the weekend. It's just like, Oh my gosh, you know, we need a break. So, you yeah. know, so we've tried to just back off a little bit as well, as far as bookings, just because it's just, you know, you gotta have that time to re-energize your batteries and, and come yeah. up with some new ideas and, and different mm -hmm. things. So it makes it uh, more fun for you when you're not doing the same thing over and over again. Like it's more enjoyable when you can think of those new ideas and implement them and have time to really execute them. Sure, sure. So how does someone get a hold of you if they want a book? What's the best way? I'd say Instagram is the best way because there's okay. so many ways you know you probably feel this. Like I miss messages on Facebook all the time because sure. My phone is literally all the time, like just constantly blowing up with emails, whatever, you know, just from my other job, from this, you know, from this job, all of it. So Instagram DMs, and then I'll send you my link to my inquiry page. <laughs> all right. Yep. And we'll put that on here as well. Um, so that, that way they can, they can inquire about it. So, um, so when they book, I'm assuming they book the date, sign a contract and then have to pay a deposit. Is that how you yep. work? Okay. Mm -hmm. And then the remaining balance is typically due. How how do you do that? 30 days, 90 days? What is that? 
I do. It's due seven days before the wedding or the event. If there's a special circumstance where you need to pay day of, like, that's fine. We can do that. But it has to be paid, like, when I get there. So. Sure. Okay. Okay. Uh, have you ever been burnt? What is it? Have you ever been burnt? Oh, no, I have not. That's good. I have once. So, so yeah. So that's good that you have it. I don't understand how that happens. Like how people can feel okay doing that. No, I know. That's yeah. okay though. That it was many years ago. I was young and didn't know, you know, we had just started and and I didn't have the proper things in place. So that's good. Isn't that it you funny it. looking back? Like when you first started thinking, how did I make it? Like who let me run a business? Yeah. 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 <laughs> Especially me. I'm like, <laughs> really? <laughs> so, um, all right. So we talked about you. We talked about the business. Um, we talked about the cameras that you use, your second shooters. Um, talked about the easiest way for people to get a hold of you um, mm -hmm. for inquiries and things like that. So let's talk about just real quick. Let's talk about some of the, your favorite photos that you've taken. Oh, gosh. Hey. Oh. Hey, this is Maybe fun. if you have, let's say, three or four of your favorite photos, what would they be? And that may be a tough question, you know, but I, I know two of them. Yeah. Two yeah. of them would be in the magazine. Yes. So, so that's probably two if I had to. Okay, guess. I'm going to do, well, I'll give you four. I'm going to break okay. the rules. So, All right. All right. Um, my first one is going to be Shelby and Nathan in Vogue, the first issue that they were in. Um, it was taken at the woods at Cedar Springs. That wedding venue is beautiful. If you oh. have never been oh. there, it's gorgeous. They're oh. great there. Um, yes, and it was a pose or like a prompt I'd never done before. And it was just a really sweet moment. She was kind of like tucked into his chest right here. And it was just really sweet. Okay. Um, and then the second photo would probably be Adam and Morgan that were published in Vanity Fair. Okay. Um, and I remember when I took this one, I literally looked, turned to Devin Higdon from DSH Media, and I was like, this one deserves to be in a magazine. And he was like, yes. And so, which is kind of like a full circle moment. We talk, we talk about that all the time. Uh -huh. um, and so they're like standing kind of like catty corner from each other. Adam's looking this way. Morgan's looking this way. It looks like you're in a chateau in Italy. It was beautiful. It was literally in Louisville, Kentucky. So, yeah. Okay. Um, the fourth one or the third one, I can't count. Third, third one is going to be one. I took at a styled shoot that was hosted by Madison Arnold. Um, it's with a pink figgy, like a pink figaro okay. with a riding groom. Um, and that one's just fun. Cause like, I love pink, obviously sure. I love color. Um, and then my fourth one, that one's hard. Okay. I'm going to say my fourth one is going to be from a regular shoot that I just did, um, while I was in Panama city. Okay. Um, this couple, their names are Faith and Travis. I've worked with them quite a few times now. Okay. Um, and I had literally just had him write down. I was like, I want you to write something in the sand. And she, of course, she was like, keep it appropriate. You know, like we were. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so he literally just wrote like, I love you in the sand. But we had like this, the shells and the waves were crashing. And like, it just has his feet and her hands in the photo. And it's just a really awesome. sweet moment. So awesome. Love that one. Too. Okay. All right, so that's some of your favorite ones. Um, so I hope you guys enjoyed looking at those as we as as she ex, you know talked about those. So, um, so resilient hearts photography. Yeah. How did you come up with the name? Um. Well, it's kind of funny because I literally just one day it, I caught like a god wink, like literally just like popped in my head. Um, and I remember I texted one of my friends and I was like, Hey, like if I ever had a photography business, like this is what I would name it literally out of nowhere. Like I didn't, I was in nursing school at the time, literally okay. had picked up a camera. This is before I even like took pictures of my sister for football. Okay. okay. Um, and they were like, okay, like, where did that come from? Which, you know, if you know me, you're my friend, you know, like you just never know what's going to come out of my mouth. So <laughs> sure. she didn't really like think anything of it. So, okay. um, but looking back now, it's funny, like looking back at my testimony of my life, it just shows like God has truly just kept like working in my life through everything I've been through. He's brought me through it. Um, and I'd say like one of the words that people would use to describe me would be resilient. Um, I'm an overcomer. Yeah. I'll thank God. So um, that's kind of where it came from. I think looking back now, and okay. I love when people ask me where it came from, because it gives me a chance to kind of share my story, share my testimony. I'm really like, this business like is my heart. Like I just love it so much. And I feel like if you were to look at a photo that I've taken and edited, you know, my personality, like that's truly like my brand. It's just, well, I, I, I'm waiting for some, I'm waiting for some. Yes. Yes. You are. You'll get them in a few weeks. I promise. 
We're All moving right. along a little quicker this year. <laughs> yeah, yeah. All right. So um what else do you want to tell us about about you or about the business or anything else? Anything that we didn't cover? Because folks, I, as you guys may or may not know, none of this is scripted. So I don't come to these with a list of questions. I don't prepare my vendors to say, hey, here's the questions we're going to ask. This is really just a, a conversation and whatever comes to my brain and whatever comes to the vendor's brain is kind of what we talk about. So none of this is scripted. So just, you know, there's anything. So if we missed anything, is there anything you want to add that maybe we didn't cover? Well, I would just like to talk about the importance, and I'd love your input on this too, of hiring a vendor team that works well together. Like, I think that is so important. Yeah. Um, you're what, my opinion on that? Yeah, I do. I'd like to hear it. Well, my opinion on, uh, you know, hiring a vendor team that works well together, I think is just going to make the entire thing smooth yeah. and stress-free yeah. for the bride and the groom. Yep. Um, you know, if you have, if you have, so you can also, I, I look at this as you can have too many chiefs, not enough Indians. Yeah. Oh, yes. <laughs> if, yeah. If you have a photographer that wants to do her, her way. And you have a coordinator that wants to do it her way and you have a DJ that wants to do it their way. Then they all three crash and, and just clash together, not crash, but clash together. So um, I think it is very important. And, you know, so that's why, you know, whenever someone calls me and says, Hey, I want to talk to you about DJ. I ask, have you booked any other vendors? Yeah. Uh, if so, who are they? And, you know, and if I've never heard of them, that's fine. But, you know, I right. try to at least reach out to them to say, hey, my name is Todd. We spin around sound. We're going to be working together to try to get, get that feel. But I think, you know, it, you have seen it. We have worked together. You have seen it when everybody is there. You know, I like to think, and this is going to go back to my statement saying too many chiefs. And I, I like to think that <laughs> that if you hire a, if you don't have a coordinator, if you do yeah. not have a coordinator, the DJ is my, in my opinion, and the way that we run our teams is the coordinator. Yes. So we have to make sure that we walk the, the client through every event, make yes. sure that our photographer is with us. When, you know, before we announce, yeah. hey, we're going to cut the cake and the photographer is nowhere to be found. Yep. So it's just, I, I think it is super important. And, you know, just to say, hey, I, I'm going to look at hiring this DJ, this photographer, this yeah. videographer. Um, and it just makes things so much smoother, Absolutely. Um, you know, and that's, you know, I, I would love to be able to just tell people, look, you know, um, call me, I'll book you. And then I'm just going to tell you who your photographer should be and who your caterer should be. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So just listen to me. But yeah. you know, a lot of times, you know, d dollars get in the way and they have to cut right. costs where they do. And it's just, yeah. You know, so I don't know that I have a, a real a great answer for that. I could just tell you doing this for 22 years, it is super important that you have a team that can work together. Yes. Um, and if you're a bride watching this, I think it's super important that you share the information. If your DJ doesn't ask, you share the information. Hey, here's my photographer. Here's my videographer. And then start a text thread with them just to, so you're all on the same page. Um, yes, that's so, a great idea. But it's just, it's super important. And, you know, that's just something that I've come up with here recently that just start a text thread with them all. But, you know, some of them, you know, are very open to that. And some of them just don't respond. And, you know, that's fine. Whatever. Yeah. You know, I've done my job. But, yeah, to any bride and groom that's listening, you need a dream team is really yes. what, what what people have said. Um, you know, Jessica Gleason, um was just she's a friend of both of ours and yeah. um and of course savannah shot their wedding um i did the music and she savannah posted a con or posted on facebook just a little bit ago about this vendor spotlight and jessica commented and this isn't verbatim but something about when you have the right photographer and the right dj in the same event or something i, I don't know it, it was pure when you have savannah and todd in the room it's pure magic. That's right. Best that's right. Yeah. And the best DJ. Yeah. Yeah. So <laughs> it's, it's just, it is so important to have the best. And, you know, I, I would, I would love to, you know, be able to, you know, team up more and, and do more events together. Cause like I said, it's just, it, it's, it, it flows. So yeah. dream team is what you want. And, yes. you know, and if you can work it out and make it happen, 
make it happen. Yes, so. I swear. It's just it, the difference between a day where I'll go. I've shot weddings where I don't even know the coordinator's name because I've not been able to catch them, you know, or I don't even know the videographer's name because they're doing their own thing, you know, versus I've shot weddings where with Emily Sharp, who is out of Bowling Green, who's a phenomenal planner or Cassandra Kelly out of Louisville, phenomenal Kelly James out of Southern Indiana, all phenomenal. Like I feel like it honestly starts, if you're going to hire a planner, it starts from the planner and yep. trickles down. Like sure. it's just so important to hire people that refer each other. Like it's because they've worked together. They know how each other operates. Yep. And like with me and Devin Higdon, he's a videographer. We have worked together so much to it's like the point where people sometimes think like we're the same like we have packages Nobody. together. We're like, <laughs> we don't, but we, we should probably have packages together because we work together all the time. Right. Right. So, um, and then same with like Jacqueline Harper, like she is a phenomenal photographer and she also does video and we are both out of Bullitt County. So a lot of people think like we're, we work together, like in the same company, we're like, no, we're two different people, but we just work together all the time. So right, right. Um, the difference between having a vendor team who are all working for their own goals Versus a vendor team that are working together to make it the best day that they can for the couple yeah. is, is you just can't even like tell the importance of it. Right. Um, right. No, I it's magic it. truly. And that's the only way, like, it's funny talking about like the wedding magic, but it really is like true. Like when I shot my first wedding, I was hooked. Like the adrenaline that you get from shooting a wedding and you probably get this, like the adrenaline, like when you're announcing that couple and they come in, they're so excited. Everybody in the room is like on the, their feet. It's just, there's nothing like it. And when you can give the couple everything you've got and you know that the person standing right beside you is giving them everything they've got. And it's just magic. There's sure. no other way. Yeah. So, so let us do your magic for you, right? Let us yeah. do your magic. <laughs> for sure. All yeah. Right. All right. So anything else you want to talk about before we end this vendor spotlight? Um, I could share a funny wedding story with you if you'd Let's like. Let's do it. Let's do it. What do you got? So everybody always asks me, you know, like as a wedding vendor, you see and hear crazy, crazy things. Sure. Like this is just like the number one that I always like to pull, you know, out of my brain. So I was shooting a wedding in LaGrange. It was probably, it was one of my first weddings I shot. Okay. Um, Awesome. Like everything in this wedding was like to the like details. Awesome. Amazing. Okay. Um, when I got there, everybody was ready except for one groomsman. And I was like, well, where's he at? And they're like, that's the problem. We can't find him. And we were like, I was like, you can't find him. Like nobody's seen him. And they're like, no. And he's the best man. And so everybody's trying to call him. I'm trying to call him to see maybe if they had, he had their numbers blocked, whatever. They were checking the online, like they were calling hospitals. They were checking like all kinds of different online stuff to see if he had been booked anywhere, you know, all this stuff. So it was probably like 20 or 30 minutes before the ceremony and the groom comes out, he's cussing up a storm and he's like, you're never going to believe this. Well, the best man had gotten arrested on the way home from the rehearsal dinner. Oh my <laughs> it was gosh. in the Oldham County jail. Um, and the only way they knew was because his mom showed up to the wedding and told the bride and groom. And oh. she was like, I'm not bailing his, you know what, yeah. out. Yeah. <laughs> he deserves to sit there. So he sat there and I think she went and bailed him out like after the wedding or something. So I guess he got drank too much at the rehearsal. And he got it. Yeah, I guess he got pulled over. Oh, Lord. After, but he he scared them to death. So yeah, anytime like one of my groomsmen is acting a certain way i'm like listen here i've had a groomsman get arrested before like <laughs> it is not like you are not invincible because you're a groomsman tonight i've seen right. it happen <laughs> yeah, absolutely yeah that's funny that's funny I, right. I, there are so many things that you see and hear at these events it's just and you'll never forget it no, no. people wouldn't believe <laughs> they wouldn't believe it no not at all, not at all. <laughs> all Thanks. right what else anything else you want to add no, thank you for having me. You're welcome. I, I'm so glad you got on here with us. Um, so so in closing, we're gonna say it again. I'm gonna put it up for everybody to see. But resilient hearts photography. I gotta I gotta think about that when I say it because I know I'm gonna mess yeah. it up. <laughs> so um, one more time on Insta, and what is your Insta again? At resilient hearts photography, and there it has like a, my name with a disco ball beside it. Can't miss it. Okay. All right. So plenty of ways to get in touch with her. I'll throw some of those links on here as well, guys. So you guys can check her out. 
Um, as you can tell, <clears throat> as you can tell, she is very um, adamant about making your wedding photos the best. Um, I think you can see in her personality how much joy she gets out of shooting weddings. Um, and that, that's definitely going to flow over to your event. So, you know, if you're looking for a photographer, you know, hit up Savannah. She will definitely take care of you. Like I said, we've worked together before. She'll get all the good shots and, um, you know, she'll, she puts in a lot of hours. So and I have really bad dance moves on the dance floor. You have really bad dance moves. Yep. You all didn't right. see me last weekend. <laughs> I don't think so. Maybe I played the Jonas brothers and I just couldn't oh. help myself. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. So, so yeah, so don't hire her to dance, just hire no. her. To <laughs> all right. So Savannah, thanks so much for hopping on here with us. I hope you, you I hope you enjoyed it. Um, guys, check her out on Insta um, and, and, you know, give her a call. Talk to her about your event. And as you can see with her personality and her attitude, your photos are going to be amazing. So thanks Thank so you. much for watching. Um, until next time, y'all, y'all be safe. We'll see you soon.